This section is about human blood circulation. It covers how the heart circulates blood around the body and the composition of blood itself. First, we'll look at how the heart circulates blood. The heart is a complex muscle. It beats 3,000 million times in a human lifespan, forcing the blood round the body once every minute. If we look inside the heart, then we can see there is a thin-walled chamber and a thick-walled chamber. The smaller chamber delivers blood through the pulmonary artery to the lungs for oxygenation. It then returns to the thick-walled chamber to be delivered to the body through the aorta. Fresh blood leaves the heart through the aorta, the first part of a system of arteries that branch out all over the body. Because they're under pressure, arteries have thick walls. From the arteries, the blood squeezes through capillaries. Their walls are so thin that nutrients and oxygen can diffuse out to feed cells, while waste products move into the bloodstream to be carried away. The dirty blood is collected in veins. As it's now at low pressure, veins have quite thin walls and valves to make sure the blood flows the right way back to the heart. But before it goes round the body again, the heart pumps the blood in a short second loop through the lungs. Because of that second loop, the human circulation system is called a double circulation. So to summarise, arteries are thick-walled muscular tubes that carry blood away from the heart. Veins are thin-walled tubes that carry blood back to the heart. They have a large diameter and valves to keep the blood flowing in one direction. Capillaries are very narrow tubes, with walls only one cell thick, which carry blood through our tissues. But how does the heart actually work? The vena cava is the main vein that brings blood from the body to the right atrium. The blood goes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. It's then pumped out through the pulmonary artery to the lungs. In the lungs, the blood is enriched with oxygen. Blood that's rich in oxygen then comes back through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium. It then goes through the bicuspid valve into the more muscular left ventricle, which pumps it off to the whole body through the aorta. See how the heart is doing two things at once? That's called double circulation. While the right ventricle is pumping blood to the lungs, the left ventricle is pumping blood right around the body. The left ventricle wall is more muscular than the right ventricle because it has to push the blood further around the body. You need to be able to label the various parts of the heart properly. Remember, the left and right on the diagram are the opposite way to your own left and right. They're as if you're looking at the heart from the front. This diagram is also in the biology section of the GCSE Bite Size website. Now, what about the composition of the blood itself? Blood is a liquid medium that transports dissolved substances around the body. Blood is made up of plasma, red and white blood cells, and platelets. Plasma is a straw-coloured, watery fluid. It carries digested food particles, like glucose and amino acids, and dissolved mineral salts, hormones and dissolved gases, such as oxygen and carbon dioxide, waste products, such as urea, the white and red blood cells, and platelets, and antibodies produced by the white blood cells. Platelets are fragments of cell which help the blood to clot after a cut or injury. Red blood cells carry oxygen to all the body's cells for respiration. They have a red pigment called haemoglobin which combines easily with oxygen. This makes oxyhemoglobin which gives up oxygen easily wherever it's needed. Red blood cells are small and flexible, so they can pass along capillaries to carry oxygen to the cells. 
Unlike most other cells, they have no nucleus. White blood cells engulf and digest foreign bodies like bacteria. They are adapted to their function because they change their shape to flow around bacteria. White cells also make antibodies to aid the body's immune system. Antibodies fight threats from viruses and infections from outside the body. The next clip explains how antibodies and the body's immune system works. Normally, the body's immune system has a whole army of antibodies that protect it against invading cells. Any unfamiliar cells are dealt with by the antibodies. T helper cells assist by sniffing out unfamiliar bodies in whatever form they take. They warn the immune system to make the right kind of antibodies. New antibodies destroy the invader. These antibodies remain on standby in the body in case the invaders return. That's the end of the section on blood circulation and the heart.